Hi, Lori. Hello, how are you? Fine, are you? <laughs> Good, thank you. Okay. Um, well, you've released a new album. Um, takes courage. <laughs> it does uh, take courage. It does take courage to <laughs> yeah. do it nowadays. Um, <laughs> A lot of few songs by other artists, written by other artists, and yeah. few songs by uh, by yourself. Yeah. Um, first, let me start off with all well, the songs written by other artists. Okay. Um, I wonder, did you ever meet Dennis Wilson? No, I didn't. I didn't. Because I would I think have he wrote. To. He wrote. Mm -hmm. I know he you? wrote this song uh, only, only with, with you, and and actually, it just got suggested to me um, about six months ago that I even listen to it and record it. So I had never met him, and I only just recently heard the song, which I yeah. loved. Mm -hmm. Okay, so were you into the Beach Boys then? Oh God, in the '60s I was into them. Yeah, yeah. I used to love them. I mean, you know, the early stuff. The early I stuff. Loved. So not and, and I do like, you know, Brian Wilson. I have a lot of respect for. I never met Dennis Wilson. Okay. Now because uh, well, I think the first few years of the Beach Boys, there, Brian Wilson wrote all the songs. Yeah. But then I think around the 70s he broke. He had a nervous breakdown, yeah. and then yeah. Dennis Wilson also started started to write songs. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's actually his song. That's right. I know that. Yeah. Um, why did you pick this song to to record? You know, um, someone that I had been in contact with, uh, a gentleman named Rule Krause, um he suggested it along with the head of the record company, Chris Bogue, and they said, you know, this is a really nice song. I don't know. It's never been done by a female you know, is see if it's something that you relate to. And and I listened to it, and, and hearing Dennis Wilson's version, uh, at first I didn't really relate to it. And then I thought, well, if why I not, just, well, just the arrangement of it. The arrangement was a bigger, kind of a heavy yeah, two yeah. feel on the piano. So they started sort of messing around on my guitar with it and came up with, uh, with something that I felt fit. And then I created a string arrangement around it so it's a little more, in my world, it's it's more integrated with what I do, and then I really liked it. And I love the message; it's a beautiful message. Is it for you? Um, sometimes people say, "Well, if if you, if you well delve into a song as not your own song, or written by someone else, then you learn something about songwriting. Maybe every oh, time you do it, yeah, what did you learn from this true. song? That uh, it's a very simple song, but it has a very profound meaning. That's what I learned. And even though it, it comes across as simple, actually the chords and the structure are more complex than I realized. Let's, let's pick another song. I won't, I won't do every song, no, I'll just pick a few. Interesting. Um, New York Mining Disaster. Mm. Um, yeah. Why this song? I think it's been released in 1965, 66. Yeah, and uh, you know, I am drawn to uh, songs that go by quickly that maybe you don't focus on the lyrics, but then if you take the time to really um, listen, they have a deeper quality. If you slow them down, they have a more haunting message too. I was, I always loved as a kid, you know, have you seen my wife, Mr. Jones? I thought that was very cool, but I never realized that it also co coincided with these mining disasters, especially Chile. The United States and it was very timely and then I started to play it in again in my way I slowed it down and I wrote a more baroque string arrangement to it and for me it has uh, many levels it talks I changed it also to a woman's point of view so instead of have you seen my wife Mr. Jones it's have you seen your wife Mr. Jones don't go talking too loud you'll you'll cause a landslide. For me, that meant a relationship. Keep things safe, keep things quiet. And uh, it, it was uh, haunting to me, and that's why I did it. Did you ever meet Barry Gibb? No, I didn't, I didn't. So what do, you think of, what do you think then of this song? Because uh, it's one of the earliest songs you yeah. wrote. Yeah. Uh, like, like, like you were saying, you slowed it down. Yeah. Because uh, normally when you hear the the beginning, the intro of this song is really well familiar. Yeah. But when I when I hear your song, I didn't at first. I didn't know it was this song. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And also, why do you slow it down? Why? 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 Well, it doesn't work. I'm. I think I have a an idea of the kind of singer I am, and to do a, a, a rock version of that, it's not me. Okay. It's just not. And I felt that it was inauthentic to who I am anyway. New York mining disaster actually is something that they wrote in a stairwell 
yeah. and New York mining disaster 1941 never really existed. So it was a figment of their, their I just think so brilliant. But um, I slowed it down so that I could enhance the arrangement, really. What did you learn from this song? Oh, so much. So much. I mean, the depth of the lyric, the, the, the multi-layered quality of the lyric, that it's not at face value, face culture, it's not at face value, it's uh, way, way, way deeper. Um, and the music itself, there's not a lot of musical information in that song, which also was challenging for me. There's a, there's a verse and a chorus, and that's about it. And if you look at the lyric, it's like that long. And so for me, I opened it up to a Baroque um, breakdown, a string breakdown in the middle. I learned that you can make something of a song by t extrapolating lyrics on top of existing lyrics and create a world. That's what I learned from that.